Hello my legends, my name is Matthew Lavis. This is another how-to instructional video brought to you by my company, Vitech, Visual Innovative Technology. Been around for 10 plus years and uh, going on to 11 this October. I uh, really appreciate the views and the likes. And uh, it's been, my late, last video definitely got me motivated to do more videos. So today I wanted to do one how to install Android in a virtual machine. Now you may be wondering, well, why would I want to do this? It's actually pretty simple. The one main reason for bringing a or having your own flavor of virtual machine would be to uh, have control. One thing I would like you all to look at, or maybe you want to install, or if you don't have it, then definitely go down below. It's going to be in my description on a company called Glasswire. I'm an affiliate with them. Every time you buy a license, I get a small kickback and it helps keep me, uh, allows me to keep making videos for sure. Uh, so this one's called Glasswire. So here you see a graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause. And let's take a look, Google Chrome. So Microsoft OneDrive, more Microsoft Outlook. Uh, let's see another one. Google Chrome, these are all internal networks I'm talking to, my kernel, etc. Okay. So why is that important? Well, usually that's what my data looks like, right? Because I'm working every single day. I have Outlook open. I have my Screen Connect, uh, which is my remote monitoring service. All these things I'm using on a daily basis. And then all of a sudden, if you wanted to use, which in my case, I was using some of the top uh, suggested Android emulators, KO Player, uh, Nox, Bluestacks, and even Android Studios. Android Studios is way overkill, however, it is a very vanilla flavor because it is a development application first. You have, it requires a ton of dependencies to be installed on your machine, so it's way overkill, very resource intensive. Yeah, you have all these uh, different uh, selections to choose from, and it's from Android, but it's overkill. And uh, I didn't find it very efficient for doing one thing or a few things that I wanted to do. Thus, there's these emulators. Here's the bad thing. When you watch on a live graph of your network, those emulators are sending out heuristic and analytical data, particular system ID names, your IP address, to China. Yeah, to China, to Russia. I was like, what the, or what the heck? I was so, what you can do on Glasswire, I think as they have this capability, is you can go to your firewall, Click on that app, or you can even do it from the graph, and then hit, you know, block the app. So let's give you an example here. So if I clicked here, and I could double click on this and block this host, or that IP address, and it would block it, and then I couldn't access it. However, those sneaky, sneaky P developers would update the IP addresses, and it would still send it off. That is not okay, in my opinion. So let's take control. Now, Android Studios it does not do that because it is from Android, but the other third party emulators are, and they are sending information to that IP address uh, that are sketchy, or at least say that they're from China and Russia. For all I know, they are from the US, I don't know. But from what the IP address is listed as their country code is there. Um, so let's go ahead and install uh, 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 a Android, it's called Lineage OS, and uh, so that's how we're gonna do it. So I don't need to talk to you through how to install a virtual machine. If you have, don't know how to install a virtual machine, they're pretty much universal. So VirtualBox, in this case I'm using VMware Workstation, you can use the Microsoft Hypervisor that's built into your system. They're all the same thing. It's usually about creating a new virtual machine. So let's go ahead and go through that. So custom, I'm gonna go through this. This is the ISO file I'm going to use. So you may wonder where am I grabbing that ISO file? So I'll show you. So it's just android-x86.org. Click the download button or your favorite version or, vin or flavor of uh, Android. So there's NuGet, Oreo, and then of course Marshmallow, which is the one I'm using, which is Marshmallow. We're gonna click next. We can call this Android VM. We're gonna call this put it on my e-drive because I have more space there we're gonna give this bad boy a couple of core processors and Android is about just to run the system is about 1.1 gigs so we're gonna give it 4096 or 4 gigabytes of RAM gives it plenty of space to maneuver make sure you use NAT make sure you use the LSI logic 
this is a must. If you mess up anywhere here and choose something else, I know that previous versions of EMR Workstation or VirtualBox default to SCSI drives. It will not work, it will not boot. Make sure it's IDE. Click next, create the new virtual disk. I'm gonna say 20 gigs is fine. Um, you'll see why, because four gig is the min, eight is the best for the boot drive. And we'll talk about that right now. Make sure to hit customize your, your, your hardware, because there's a few things we need to make a change to. So the first one is sometimes by default, this is turned off. You definitely wanna connect the power, otherwise it boot loops forever and ever, because there's no way to talk to the ISO. So make sure it's on the ISO, make sure it's connected at power. Next thing, if you want sound, definitely make sure it's connected. If you want it to output to a specific, let's say your favorite headsets or whatever, you want to play video games on your Android uh, virtual machine, then you can specify where that output of the, and you can do that live too, by the way, you don't have to just do it here. Here's the next thing you have to do. You have to have accelerated 3D graphics. So go ahead and click that. Ignore this warning. It's just telling you it's not supported. It is, and I like to specify 512 as the minimum. And I'm gonna hit close, and that's it. So go ahead and hit finish. We'll restretch out the screen so it kind of fits within our our our, uh, our flavor here. And nope, we don't want to run a live installation. We want to actually install it because I'm gonna walk you through how we install Android. So let's make this big again, or fit within the screen. So first you need to create slash modify a partition. So we're gonna create partitions. Answer no here, do not answer yes. Do not create a GPT unless you know, if you're installing this, let's say on a USB stick and you're gonna plug it into a laptop and you know for a fact that your hard drive is gonna be in a GPT format and the hard drive is gonna be a GPT and you know it can boot to GPT, then it's a class, but otherwise it's a no. Okay, so from here, since we're not using GPT, we're going to create a new format and it's gonna be a primary, it's not logical, it's a primary hard drive. And we're gonna make this 8,156, so that's eight gigs. Go ahead and hit okay. And it is the beginning, yes. And here's a, make sure it's on the SDA1, it's on the primary, it says Linux. And on the boot drive, we wanna make it bootable. So hit that flag, bootable. So now as you saw, I added that flag, boot. Now we're gonna write it. We're gonna hit yes, or ye. And then it's going to write that partition and make it uh, available. So see, it said it wrote. So let's go ahead and hit quit. And now you can see it created that uh, SDA1. And it's a little under 8 gigabytes. That's fine. Hit OK. And uh, I hit, if you do this, it won't work. So you have to format it. Again, you need to know the format of your drive before you just do what I'm about to. So yes, I do need to format it. And I want to use ext4 and it's going to format it and you're gonna lose all your data but it's a blank drive so it's fine yes you want to install grub now if you're a pro and you know how to install grub yourself then you can hit skip and do it later I, i'm just gonna let grub be installed during the during this installation process yes i want my folders to be read and write so i can debug if i need to and there it goes. Now you just let it go through the installation here. It takes just a minute, or if your system uh, doesn't work it, or it doesn't allow it, it to take longer. How 600X series? Okay, so it finished, see? Go ahead and hit Run Lineage OS. And what we're gonna do while it's booting up, we're gonna disconnect this from, if in case we accidentally reboot our, our hard drive, and we're gonna make sure we kill that off of our VM. It's gonna, yes, I'm gonna override the lock. And now I just like yanked the CD tray out of the system. And uh, you know, I can't talk anymore to the OS, which is good, right? Because if we reboot, it's gonna try to reboot into the installation mode. You don't want that. So let's go ahead and pause it. Then we'll walk through the next phase of this. Oh, in here. You're gonna wanna turn off. I turned off ac uh, GPS, I turned off backups, I turned off account syncing. I don't want to send my system data. See, all this stuff you can't do on those other third parties. They just do it for you, and then they send it to them. Uh, so yeah, I've turned off everything. Nope, I don't need that. Nope, I'm all set. <clears throat> uh, so again, it wants you to send stuff to Linux OS, diagnostic data. I don't want to. So let's go ahead and hit next and hit start.
and boom, here we are in uh, Marshmallow. So we want to use Trebush always. Nope, I don't want to send hardware information. I don't want to send app usage. And I got it. Okay, so a couple things you're going to want to make uh, as far as changes are your settings. You're going to want to let it do the downloads because that's what it's doing right now. Is in your display, I hate the way this looks. Not this one. Uh, yeah, this one right here. I don't like how it tries to save my eyeballs. So I like keeping it at 6400, 63 to 6500, and it looks way better. It's that normal white that we're used to seeing. Okay, and this one. <clears throat> so I like the grid menu. These are just some basic things we need to do to. I like the dark theme. to do with apps keep there it is you want to do this one enable native bridge and that way okay le perfecto all right and then let's get rid of this stuff because i don't need it on my screen my channel it's vitech like it thumbs it up make the alert notification and i can't wait to start doing some more videos for you all Let's just try ask this Mr. Cool is the only all one AC unit you can so it works yourself. just fine. And it only takes a few hours. And the, even, even that works. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. We don't need it right now. So in our Play Store, and I'm going to get rid of all that. We don't need that either. I wanted to use this particular case for Y security cameras. If you don't know what Wise is, it's a very affordable awesome product for security cameras they're only like 20 bucks on amazon you can buy a pack of them for like 38 dollars for four of them um and they work phenomenally well i've always been a huge fan of this product and this i've been using it since they first came out in beta and so i've been a big component perfect so you just log in with your credentials i'll go ahead and do that now so there's so many things you can do here you can play hearthstone you can play uh, what is it? Clash... Clash Royale? No, 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 no. Which is the other one I like? I don't play many games. Oh, uh, Clash of Clans. I know I'm a little old school here, but it, I like it and it does work. So, yeah. Bob's your uncle. Once you get things working, it is a literal Android machine. Let's take a look at Glasswire. I bet you'll be pretty shocked. There ain't a lot of things going on just normal stuff Microsoft office Microsoft office 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 Google Chrome who's it talking to just Chrome that's it it's just because my Chrome's open pretty impressive oh one's talking to my router so that's okay normal things that are on my on my traffic and other than that, pretty quiet, right? Anyways, I thought you would like that. So here it is. It allows you to say, hey, first of all, it allows you to tell the system, nope, I don't want you sending any information about this installation. And it listens. Second, uh, it's, it's your own virtual machine, and it's pretty vanilla. As you saw, there's only a few things baked in, which is audio controls, a Tor browser, some collaborations for your finger, the default things for contacts, calendars, your files, your gallery here. And if you want to remove anything, you can always remove it or add it or do whatever you need to do to the system. Um, like I said, I don't like the gallery. It's a lot better. You know, so there's all kinds of things you could do. So in my particular case, what you may well be interested in or what I was going to use it for is security cameras. I have multiple clients on WISE. And I want to keep an eye or make sure that it's working or if I need to do administrative stuff or heck, if I just want to just, you know, use my own uh, for my own home and keep it up on full screen on my like third screen to plug up another monitor to my graphics card and stick it over there. Got yourself a little uh, security camera without having to run or go out and buy an extra uh, Android phone and install a server on it. It not only is really inefficient, it uses a lot of battery life, creates a lot of thermal heat. This was a lot simpler. 
as long as you got RAM and CPU power to spare, which a lot of us do, um, just because of how powerful systems are nowadays, this is a great option for you. Or, heck, but if you're a gamer and you like to play uh, mobile games, here you go. This is one way to do it. Uh, give you some PUBG mobile. Um, maybe you like a holler, reach out, give me some comments. If you run into errors, usually like 99.9% .9 of the times, it's because you just have hardware incompatibility, meaning that you know it may just not work with your version. If you have this old Dell Optiplex, you know, 2090 something, there's a good chance it's not gonna work. Um, it could be just that the virtualization isn't turned on, your Intel's, you know, old school Intel CPU is just not gonna give you enough power to run it. Or heck, you may just have already four gigs only on your machine, so supplying it with one gig or two gigs is just gonna be a miserable experience for you. Make sure your computer is up to date. It has at least 16 gigs, if not eight gigs at the minimum, so you can divert some resources to your virtual machine. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you again for viewing another episode on how to for Vitech. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Don't forget to hit that affiliate link below for Glasswire. Take care.